Hey guys, we're gonna be going back to the Nyan Beast. Um, some of you have asked me to do a high score or a rank one clear if you don't have Kresnik. So we're gonna be doing a rank one clear without Kresnik with this party setup. Um, all modifiers turned on and we're using Bulwark instead of Kresnik. So I've worked out the clear and this does work, but it is a little trickier than my other clear. Um, but let's go ahead and show and explain how it's going to be done. Okay, so start off, we're going to have Sky start in the base, go to the shift. We're going to do her shifted LB. We're going to have Chow do guard dog, kind protector, and focused intervention or inspiration. Uh, Laura is going to do calamity border. Ling is going to start in the shift, go to the base, do blithe purifying and disarming and then bulwark is going to start in the shift go to the base do chirrup and mixtape then louise will do triple ionic and power boost to remove the brakes off the party so we have accuracy down and chow has 50 percent evasion with his gear <clears throat> so we're going to tank this first turn not really a problem uh, now, without Kresnik, we do need to counterattack a lot with Chow. Uh, so people have asked me, what if I don't have things like Cypher's Upgraded Overcoat or Looming Wrath? These are limited time counter increase in gears. Uh, if you don't have those, you can use things like a second copy of Blizzard Orb. It does stack with the original or the first copy. Uh, you could also use Chloe's TMR. It's a four-star unit. She gives... Um, Proof of Talent, it's a counter increasing source. Now these are obviously not as good as the limited items, that's the reason most people use the limited items if you own them. But if you don't have them, these are viable alternatives. Your clear just may rely more on luck to um, to get the, get the counters you need because uh, you do need to counter a lot for morale if you're not using Kresnik. And as you can see, we are countering a lot with morale. But this, this is how we do it without Kresnik on the party. Now as far as the accuracy stuff, we're going to use Ling to shift and do her shifted LB for the accuracy. But before we do that, as the first action on turn 2, Laura Croft is going to Rage Beast Roar on Sky. That way we get rid of the Imperils. Now Sky can do her shifted LB again. Chow is going to put up double true guardians and then most loyal. That's for morale, also to rebuff Sky because we did dispel her. Louise is going to do um, incapacitate, power boost, tactical, and ionic. You got to use ionic at least once to seal the boss. Uh, Ling is going to do the shifted LB for Mirage. And Bulwark is going to do triple. We're going to do. Cherub, Koopo Clang, and Jaunty Jubilee on Chow. Now, we need the boss to do five or less of Razor Claws. We got five stack of Mirage. Now, the physical damage is going to hit Chow. Chow is not going to be immune to the damage because we're not using Kresnik. But with Bulwark's 85% physical mitigation, Chow should be okay. So there's the damage over time. It did hit Sky pretty hard. Make sure she doesn't die. We cannot waste her guts this early in the fight. We need her guts still. So I haven't been keeping track, but hopefully the boss has done less than five Razor Claws. Well, I know he has because we're not dead. Um, if he does more than five Razor Claws, your run's kind of over. You gotta just try it again. Now one good thing about not using Kresnik is the fact that because we're not imbuing the boss, we're not immune to the physical. Um, which means we can counter it. You can't counter a, an attack that you completely resist. So this means Chow is going to actually counter more than usual on turns 2 and 3. Which is good for morale. Which is what we really need. We really need morale pushed up very, very high. And as you can see, Chow handles that for us with the counter attacks. Okay. So turn 3, we're going to have Laura reapply Calamity Border. Sky is going to do another stack of her LB. Uh, Ling is going to... Let's do Ling in a moment. Let's have Chow just repeat the most loyal and then double true guardian to fill morale gauge. Uh, Bulwark is going to, on this turn, triple jingle. We're going to chirrup. We're going to mixtape. 
and we're going to Jaunty Jubilee again on Cho. That's so it's still up for next turn. All right, Louise is gonna shift this turn. This turn, we're gonna do the field, we're gonna do the gun in peril, and then double Ionic. And then Ling, in the base form, we're we'll gonna go to the base form here. We're gonna do Blythe, we're gonna do, now you could do Ferocity, it's more morale, but we're gonna do Moving, because you may not have Ferocity unlocked at this point. And we're gonna do Celestial Dance. Celestial Dance is a four stack Mirage. So, like the previous turn, we need the boss to not go crazy on Razor Claw. Uh, this turn, we can only handle four Razor Claws. So, four is okay, five is the game over. Let's have the fingers crossed here. One Razor Claw. Looking good. I think we're, I think we're okay. Two Razor Claw. Only two. Outstanding. Very nice. Okay. So, again, a lot of counterattacks because we didn't... Um, we didn't immune the physical damage, so Chao will counter it more than usual. Let him finish off his counter routine. So keep it going, Chao. That's good enough. We're, we're going to fill morale gauge from here, but, you know, more doesn't hurt. Oh, I see it inching further. Keep it going, Chao. Are we going to max it all the way on turn three? Well, there we go. Chow maxed the morale gauge on turn three for us with the counterattacks. No Kresnik. Awesome. Okay. Anyway, now it's turn four. So we're going to go ahead and get ready for the burst. So Sky is going to go to the base form, and we're going to Tyvis' Spirit for modifier boost. Chow is going to shift and get his modifier boost. So we're going to Bestowment of Courage. Prosperous Light and Double Chow Chow Condemnation. Laura Croft is going to Exercise Jade. That's just for a morale, for a morale boost. If you don't have um, the Jade Pen, then it doesn't matter. As you saw, our morale was fine anyway. Uh, Louise to the base form. Uh, let's have Bulwark to the shift form. And we're going to shift Ling as well. We're going to do all the killer buffs this turn. So the nice thing about this clear is we actually have 150 to both killers on the team. So we're going to Blythe, we're going to Fire Imbue, and we're going to Hunter Stance for Beast Killer. Bulwark is going to Triple, we're going to Chirrup, Mixtape, and we're going to Moops Melody for Fairy Killer. Louise is going to Triple, we're going to Ionic to seal the boss, you got to do that. We're going to Amplify, we're going to do a, a long-term killer buff, and we're going to do a, um, uh, what else did I want to do this turn? Oh yeah. And a power boost for a long-term um, uh, break immunity. We're also going to do the defense and spirit buff this turn. Do it on turn four. That way um, the boss doesn't have... Uh, or that way we help we help Chow survive. Because currently Chow is now shifted and in his shift form. Which is not wearing as much uh, tank gear. It's more of a DPS form. Uh, now we do still have 85% mitt from Bulwark. Also, the boss has no accuracy, so we're not taking any physical damage at all. And we have 400% spirit buff, so Chow should be totally fine on this turn. You know, turn four is really dangerous for, for human tanks, but not for not for beast tanks. Also, I did give Chow shift form the Blizzard Orb. You might be noticing these counterattacks. I wanted the party topped off going into the turn five. And um, Chow having Blizzard Orb really helps. We're not using Kresnik, and there's no real healer. So I wanted more sources of healing for the party. Okay, so turn five. So turn five is easy because the, the, the damage for this clear is not a problem at all. Okay, we're probably auto-casting the finish. Come on, Louise. Oh my god. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the shifted LB of Chow, the shifted LB of Sky. We're going to go to the base form with Ling, and she's going to chain Bolting Strike with Blue Wave. Uh, Bulwark is going to triple. We're going to do double Chocophony and a Mascophony for Bolting. Louise is going to shift, and we're going to do Louise to triple Bolting and Magnus. Now, you might be wondering why am I not using Louise as a Chaos Wave Awakened? It's more damage. Technically, that is absolutely true, but... Uh, it's, an, it's, it's more irritating. This is easier, and damage is not really a concern on this clear. Surviving is. So we're going to Volatile in the shift form with Laura. We're going to do the attack and magic buff. Notice we can't do the defensive spirit buff. We used it last turn. That was intended. Okay, 
So, the damage over time is on the party, and we don't have the imperils cured right now. So the damage over time is going to basically kill most of the party. Chow, Laura, Louise, and Bulwark all have guts naturally in their kit. I have given Sky and Ling guts from an item. This is why it's really important Sky did not waste her guts earlier in the fight. So let's go ahead and do our damage, and then we'll go ahead and guts the damage over time. So Chow's going to go, and then we're going to chain everyone else. Make sure you click Laura before Sky. And this should comfortably overcap damage. damage. Damage is not the problem in this clear. 3.14. Way, way overcapped on damage here. So there's the threshold, damage over time, etc. Now, you might be wondering if you can just finish off the fight right here. I've seen a lot of comments saying, why don't you just kill the boss on turn 6? If your party is strong enough to do that, by all means, go for it. I tried it, and most of the time, I come up short. It did work once or twice in my testing, but most of the time, I try to burst again on turn 6. I get him to 5%, and it's just game over, and no, that's no fun. So we're going to go for also a risky, a risky move and trying to survive turn 6. So, to do this, the very first action of this turn, before you do anything... We're going to shift the Ling, and we're going to dispel those Imperils. So AoE dispel everything, then we're going to do Dragon Dancer, and then we're going to do Dance of Ferocity to fill LB Gauge to get Laura refilled. Okay, now after doing that, Louise is going to put up the debuffs again. We're going to Fire Starter. That also imbues the party for one turn with fire. We're going to Gun in Peril, we're going to Break the Boss, and we're going to Ionic, which should top off Laura the rest of the way. There we go. Okay. We're going to go to the base form with Chow. We're going to put up the Defense and Spirit buff. We're going to put up the Attack and Magic buff. We're also going to Blind the Boss to give him one less action this turn, because it does consume an action for him to cure Blind. Uh, Chow is now going to Triple. We're going to Guard Dog, Kind Protector and Focused Inspiration. That'll also heal Chow back to full and give the party a nice big barrier. Okay, so Sky is going to do the shifted LB. Laura is going to do Volatile again. And Bulwark is going to triple. We're going to double Chocophony and Mascophony. Okay, so Sky, Ling, Laura are all going to die and re-raise, um, which is fine, not a problem. When the boss gets a turn, if the boss goes completely and utterly bonkers on Mystic Wave and kills Chow too quickly, uh, your run's kind of ruined. This is, this is the biggest part of RNG for the fight, is turn 6. If he doesn't do too many Mystic Waves in a row, you'll be okay. Let's go ahead and do our burst here to, to, to weaken the boss a little bit. This will do about 20-ish percent. 23%? Perfect. Okay, here's the damage over time. Killed two people, not a problem, they come back. Okay, fingers crossed that we don't lose Chow to a bunch of Mystic Waves. There's one, please don't do a ton more. There's two. We need some luck here. There's another one. Oh my god, Chow actually survived entirely that time. Okay, so that is the that is the dream scenario. This is going to be a trivial finish off. Very, very easy. Because Chow survived entirely. Not only did Chow survive, he can now counterattack because he didn't die at all. I will tell you from experience, 9 out of 10 times Chow is going to die a minimum of once. Which means you will not have all these counterattacks right now. Usually, Chow will die a minimum of once. Then he'll re-raise and come back. He might even die a second time. Um, okay, so assuming Chow died at least once, you're going to need LB Gage on Laura. So we're going to pretend like Chow died at least once and didn't counterattack at all. So what you would do is shift Laura to the base... She's already in the base form, which has a little bit of fill rate equipped. Then Ling would do triple... You're going to Magnus to fill LB Gauge. You're going to 
Beast Killer buff, and you're going to imbue the party with fire. If Laura's LB is very, very low, you can skip the killer buff on Ling and do um, a ferocity on Ling as well. And that'll give even more LB to Laura. Uh, Bulwark is going to triple this turn. You're going to do Fairy Killer. And then you're going to just hit the boss twice with Mascophony to get some crystal drops. And you're hoping these crystals go to Laura and get her LB maxed out. She should be in the base form at this point. At this point, your Laura should have her LB good to go. So we're going to shift Laura. And now we're going to do a Queen of the Jungle. We're going to use Louise to triple bolting. Remember, we did all the um, we did all the debuffs last turn, so the boss is gun imperiled, fire imperiled, all that. Uh, Sky is going to shift and cap. Now she did lose all her stacks because she died. This is an unstacked Sky, but that's okay. And then Chow, if he survived, will shift and cap as well. If he didn't survive, it can be finished off with just Laura and Sky. So we're going to go ahead and do the attack and magic buff. And, okay, so we burst it and do it. So we do Chow, and then we chain these guys, cap it with Laura, or with, with Sky. And there it is. I'm not sure what the damage breakdown there was, but uh, there was a rank one clear um, without Kresnik. So I'll show you the gear and all and explain. Yeah, so the turn six, turn six, biggest headache ever. Um, there's probably better ways to deal with turn six, but just in case you don't, uh, in case your child dies twice, um, it can still be finished off as long as the party remains standing and alive. So here's the damage breakdown. Laura Croft absolutely carries that because she doesn't have any kind of buildup. Sky, you know, had a big burst on turn five, but then she died, lost all her stacks, lost Tybus' STMR, etc. So, um, yeah, there are our, yeah, Laura Croft carries this fight so hard, so hard. If you don't have Laura Croft, you know, unfortunate. <laughs> uh, rank one might not be doable without Laura Croft. I don't know, maybe, maybe someone will figure it out. Anyway, let's go ahead and show the team, show the team, show the gear, and explain what's going on in more detail. So, um, yeah, without Chow, I miss how, without Kresnik, very doable for rank one. A um, little bit harder, a little bit harder. I think Kresnik is overall better than Bulwark for the clear because Kresnik makes morale a lot easier and Kresnik makes it a little bit safer on turn six. Anyway, here's the party and what we use. And again, before I start showing you the gear and you freak out that, oh, it's so high end, I mean, it's, it's a rank one clear. This is to be expected. If you need like budget runs or just plain old high score runs that aren't quite as gear intensive, I do have videos for that as well. But for rank one, you kind of need the good stuff. So, Chow, in the base form, is geared for 50% or better evasion um, and some thunder and dark resist. You don't need any fire or earth resist at all. Completely ignore those. But you want some thunder and earth resist. Uh, Blizzard Orb is critical. You have to have Blizzard Orb. If you don't have Cypher's Coat and you don't have Looming Wrath, um, the one I was talking about is Proof of Talent. Proof of Talent is from Chloe. It's her TMR. She's a permanent unit. It's a 25% counter increase rate. So obviously 50% increase rate is better, but if you don't have Looming Wrath, you can use Chloe's TMR. If you don't have the Overcoat, you can use a second Blizzard Orb, or you can use Tifa's Glove from Advent Children Tifa, and this gives you, um, again, 30% counter increase chance. So it's not as good as Cypher's Coat, but Tifa's Glove is a permanent item. Proof of Talent are permanent items. Those will help. Also, if you have a second copy of Blizzard Orb, that helps as well. But don't lose too much bulk if, if you can. Um, you do want 50% or better evasion. So I, I, I made a mistake in my earlier video. I said Chow has 50 naturally. He actually doesn't. He has 30 naturally, and I'm getting the other 20% from Diadem, Celestite, Diadem of Will, or Dancers, I'm sorry. If you don't have the Dancers, Dancers, the, the hat from Clash of Wills, um, just use your best hat and give him 20% evasion from another source. Or you can just roll the dice and go with like an 80% total evasion, you know, 
uh, 30% natural, 50 from accuracy down, and just hope for the best. Um, I don't recommend that, especially in Phase 2, because Chow is going to get killed really quickly, even quicker than Mystic Wave. So I do recommend you fit Evasion somehow. You could maybe like swap one of these things, um, like swap Protector of the Forest for uh, an Evasion material or something. Also, I'll mention um, Everlasting Kindness is the STMR from 7 Star Chow. This does turn on the, the Neo Visions Chow's passive. And it gives 20% HP. We're not using a robe, so ignore the spirit. But the 20% HP is really good for him because we overcap spirit even without his STMR. So we're getting his trust passive turned on by the old 7-star Chow's STMR. And that gives him 20% HP because, as you can see, his, his LB damage doesn't really give him any kind of bulk because we're, we're overcapped on spirit anyway. And then his shift form is pure damage. Um, LB damage versus Beast and Fairies. And I did give him one copy of Blizzard Orb. We don't need any counter up gear. This is for turn 4. Because I really want Chao healthy going into the turn 5. And the Blizzard Orb on turn 4 lets him counter attack. And heal up himself and the party. And here's the build for the LB damage. I think he was maxed on everything. We're going to double check. Okay, 300 Fairy, 275 Beast, max LB damage. There was our Chao. Sky in the base form, 100% evasion, and a source of guts. The guts is so that on turn 6, in case Chow dies twice, and the boss does one final mystic wave after Chow is dead, it hits the entire party, Sky can guts it, survive, and still finish off the fight on turn 7. So full evasion, and you want her to have 100% or better, to Thunder and Lightning Resist. That's all that matters. Um, and then there's the build. Tybus of Spirit. If you own it, it is a very good DPS gain for her. If you don't own it, as you saw, turn 5, um, we overkilled by a tremendous amount. You don't need Tybus of Spirit, but it does help. Shift Form, Gun Build, LB Damage. No resistances at all. Uh, and we do have Lucid Lenses. Um, make sure... Okay. And th th this, is, this is where you snap at me for not following my own advice. I didn't even realize my sky was not maxed out on spirit pots. Oh my god, that's being fixed in about 10 seconds. I'm going to fix that. Make sure your sky has good spirit and spirit pots so that she doesn't die to the damage over time on turn 2. With good spirit, and apparently even if it's not max potted, it's okay with the buffs we used. But we don't want to waste her guts on turn 2 when she shifted. We need her guts to be there on turn 5 for the damage over time, so she can burst again on turn 8 with all her stacks. I'm sorry, on turn 6 with all her stacks. Uh, so here's the build we used. I am absolutely going to fix her... Fix her... How did that happen? I'm going to fix her pots for just a minute. Um, so here's the build we have, and she had, I think, maxed on everything. Yeah, max fairy, max beast, and 280 LBs. Not quite maxed. Um, Ling, full evasion, and then thunder and... Dark Resist, a combined 200%, um, or 210%. Anyway, you get the idea. Uh, some LB fill, and uh, Guts. Give her Guts. I'm getting Guts from Aurora's Boons. That way she doesn't die during turn uh, 5, and she also doesn't die in case things go wrong on turn 6. And then I gave her Blue Wave. Again, you could fit in things like um, Combo Step and giving her and uh, uh, her and Bulwark like Chaos Wave Awaken frames or something, but I find Blue Wave just more convenient, so that's what I use. Shift Form, geared literally identical, um, and then Behemoth's card for the evasion. Laura Croft in the base form is, again, some Lightning and Dark Resist. Full evasion. Uh, she has Guts naturally if she's using her TMR or STMR. That gives her Guts. Um, Calamity Border. We did that on turns 1 and 3 to help Sky stack with a little bit of resist buff. Rage Beast Roar. This is so we can dispel Sky's Imperil on turn 2. And make sure that you do that before buffing on turn 2. We, that's the first action you dispel on turn 2. Uh, yeah. And then Jade Moon Pendant. It gives you a small amount of morale on turn 4. Because turn 4 we don't use an immunity buff otherwise. That gives you 5% more morale. Uh, we didn't need it. We were we were overfilled by morale on a bunch, but in case you do, that does help. It's not required. Shift form damage. Um, she carried the fight extremely hard. 
Um, she has guts naturally with her TMR or STMR and maxed everything. Yep, maxed everything. So Laura Croft carried. Louise, base form, a lot of morale stuff, double baton, Galbana lilies, uh, philosopher stone, just tons of morale fill. Full evasion and some resistances. Shift form, damage. Um, now I gave her some resistance to thunder and dark because she does shift on turn three. And again, I don't want her wasting her guts. So I gave her a little bit of resist with Garland's Cloak and Diablos Synergy uh, so she doesn't get herself killed. So there we go. And that's her build. And then Bulwark, um, again, she has a lot of auto casting, so double conductors, Paws of Prosperity, Galbana Lilies, a lot of morale fill. Um, there's the build. Shift form, geared identical. Uh, and he was, he had 100 and uh, lightning and dark resist. And yeah, he just helped with. Uh, with morale, LB fill, killers, etc. So there's the no Kresnik rank one clear. Hope it's been helpful. See you later.